the one and the only, the triple, the G O D. And I do welcome you guys back to another in style at a triple. The guy speaks on and yo, my little pony friendship is Magic Season Seven, Episode Number Twenty Two, Once Upon a Zeppelin. Now, looking at this episode is, you can look at this episode in a couple of different ways. So let's see if I can do this. All right. Let's start with the moral and the point is that this episode needed to reintroduce Iron Will because it had to bring up the point because the last time we saw him, Fluttershy learned about assertiveness. This time it's Twilight understanding her responsibility and how to be assertive when in that role that even though that you are who you are in this world, that you yourself deserve some peace and some quiet time with your family and it took the whole episode of her going through all that stuff to get what it was that she finally wanted was some peace and quiet with the rest of her family on the other end though is that this is another one of those episodes that i kind of feel has some weird social commentary to it and i mean social commentary because the last time we talked about social commentary it was an episode where everybody was going eight nuts over the main six it was a crazy weird thing something something push star like glimmer blah pony roman Reigns. anyway the social commentary in this is how nuts fans can be sometimes how sometimes you can easily be misled into thinking one thing is one thing and then it's something else all the other which was Iron Will's whole point was here here's another more here's another lesson this ain't even a moral learn to read the fine print just saying read the legal lease kids read it always it'll say that ass say the culo just read it that's what it's there for and if you don't know how to read it Go find someone who does because you sign over the wrong thing, you'll sign your life away and not even know it. But real talk, the social commentary was really present with all the ponies going nuts over Twilight and Cadence and them not being able to have a good time. And I have to kind of sort of feel that when the voice talent goes to these cons or whatever, this may be what it's like for them. That they can't get a moment of peace and quiet. That, that maybe they, even though they were invited to this convention, that maybe they want to enjoy it too and they don't want to spend all their time hosting boat races and signing stuff not to be able to enjoy what they came to enjoy because that part where Twilight missed the the Northern Stars, that was heartbreaking a little bit to me because again, this that this episode needed a moment like that because see, it was then and only then was Twilight like, I'm beyond up to here with this nonsense. Uh-uh. I ain't trying to hit Yo, fanboy, get out my face. Yo, Iron Will, I ain't trying to hear none of this noise. Nada. And that's what it took. Because Twilight sacrificed everything to make sure that the rest of her family had a good time. And even in that, it's like you can see the little things is that the parents, they were going gaga over Flurry Heart. Like, let's, let's see if we can make princess friends because... You're not in it for your kid to make a friend. You're in it to make a, to, for your kid to make a friend to see what's in it for you. And that's not why you do anything. And it's like, and the, and the point Kate has brought up was, it's a lot easier to see the line when the line needs to be drawn for the person closest to me. And that's real with anything. And, and, and anybody who is a parent, like I am, you, you know that, when it's your child, that line has to be drawn. That you may never in this life draw that line for you, but when it comes to your children, that line is not only easy to see, but that line is very easy for yourself to mark and say to know when you've gone too far when it comes to those that I'm responsible for. And maybe necessarily you may not have kids. You may not be a parent, but you may care about people deeply where you don't care about yourself a lot, but for the people that you do go hard for, that line is easy to see and that line is easy to draw. And I think that was the part of the episode that really rang true with me because I've had to in my own life, I've had to learn to 
draw that line. Long before I was a parent, I had to learn how to draw that line, to put that line between what's okay and what's so not okay. And this episode really brought that to light. Is that, again, like I said, you, again, let's just review the review, all right? You got Iron Will. You reintroduced the character so Twilight can ultimately understand that even though you are a princess, you don't owe nobody anything. You do what you do to hold the people down, but make sure you hold yourself down first. Is that you have to learn sometimes to love yourself just a little bit more than you love everybody else. It helps you to make more sound decisions. It helps you to understand, again, that line you have to draw in the sand of where my responsibilities lie versus where my my personal self and being lie. And that's important. And this episode, why, again, we are talking about a kid show, but it's like, it's the way that I seen it and the way that it was analyzed. Because it was a fun episode. But the moral rings and legitly true is that, look, you have to draw the line sometimes. And sometimes it's hard for people who don't have any boundaries because they don't have to live where they have boundaries. There will come a situation where you are forced to draw that line to let people understand and know where it is you exactly stand. And this episode was that. Is that I'm glad, I was glad to see Iron Will again. Because again, like I said, and I repeat it again because it's bare repeating. You need a character like that to re-establish that same moral in a way that ups the ante and the greater scale. Yes, wisdoms, what do you want, beautiful? You want you just want to lay up here with you want to lay up here with that dad? Mm, I love you too, wisdoms. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm all as soon as I finish recording this, as soon as I finish recording this, I'm all yours. Alright, I promise. I'm all yours. Just give me a second. I spoil my doggy. I spoil my wisdom. She's my princess. She's my favorite. I spoil her too much. But I love you too. Alright. Go on get up her. Come on. Go on get up her. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the video. Go on get up her, girl. Come on. Come on. Go on get up her. Come on. Come on. Or you can stay down there, whatever. Let, let me finish this video, okay? How about that? Thank you. Anywho, what was I saying? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I was reviewing the reviewing of the episode. So let's try this again without my wisdoms interrupting me. Look, like I said, you need a character like Iron Will to reestablish the moral that he taught once before. You have to learn to be a certain. Is that being assertive doesn't mean being a complete asshole or dick or anything. It's just making people understand where your boundaries are and lie and learning when no is no and learning that BS is what it is and you got to cut it off at the source. That's what this lesson is. It's just that I've said this all season and I'm willing to say it right now. This season has done a lot of reintroducing morals but upping the ante for what it is you're learning the moral for. And this was another one because, again, last time we were talking about meek little Fluttershy being able to step outside of herself, non mode to be, this is what it is. And like I said, and like I've said in many reviews, when she got her you go girl moment, all of that was building up to that. This right here is a turning point. For Twilight because she ain't been an alicorn for long. She didn't been through a lot. She didn't been through a lot of heat, a lot of drama, a lot of wars, but she's still learning how to be a princess. And she has yet to draw that line between Princess Twilight Sparkle and Twilight Sparkle. And this may be an episode for her where you start to see that maybe our little Twilight who rolled into a, who rolled into Ponyville on a balloon with her with her dragon friend Spike is a alicorn princess and is learning to be and understand it finally that yo 
there is a limit, there is a line, you have to know what it is that you can be Princess Twilight Sparkle and just be Twilight too. And learning that, you know what I'm saying, is just going to be more paramount because again, like I've said in many of these reviews this season, I am up here and so are you watching characters that we love grow. And when the character that you are invested in grows, you want to celebrate that. And that's why I'm glad I get to do these reviews. I kind of wish I'd have been doing them a lot sooner. But see, I've had years to enjoy the show, years to absorb these characters. So when a character gets a good moment, like Twilight gets a mature adult moment of I am a princess line. This is me as Princess Twilight Sparkle, the Twilight Sparkle, the family person. And I am going to draw that line and it's going to be exactly what it's going to be. And you ain't got to like it, but it is what it is. I think that about does it. I think that'll do it. Repeated the mole a couple of times. This was a great episode. It was also great to see that they finally got some voice actors for um for Twilight Velvet and Nightlight because the last time on um, the last time they were on the show, Tara Strong and Andrew Francis voiced it the both of them. And it's like I kinda liked how they played that up a little bit. But it's good to see that you know that they got voice actors all their own so they can sit up here and be and not be even though like they really played it the way they did last season but i think this season for real that having them and giving them voice actors and stuff they'll have something to play on in later season with that so we'll see how that all flow out um i think that's about it something something star tracker blah 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 social commentary okay been there done that did it okay can i get done now with them can I, am I finished? Am I finished, Wisdoms? Thank you, man. Look, go ahead, get up out of here. I'm turn this into a video. I'm, of course, the one and only triple G O D, joined by my Princess Wisdoms. Princess Wisdoms, you know what it is. Another installment of Triple the Guy Speaks on in the books. And with that being said, I'll let you guys next time, man. Peace out. <laughs> Wisdoms that tickles.